All right. Now we finished trigonometric functions using the right triangle approach. We move into the next chapter where we want to do the trigonometric function. But this time we want to take the unit circle approach. So instead of thinking about um, triangles, we want to think about in circles. And we, instead of thinking about angles, we want to think about uh, real numbers. Okay. The first one will be the groundwork, that is setting up the unit circle. Okay. Why do we want to set up the unit circle? The reason is this. We were trying to study the angles, right? And we defined, okay, for any angle, if you really want to find a sine cosine, you need to find a point here. And then you are going to have a y over r, x over r to be your cosine sine, and y over x to be your tangent, things like that, which is fine. But we leave one thing uncertain, that is, this point will work, and this point, and this point, really, really they, are, they are all going to work. Okay. When you see multiple things can work, then automatically you will ask a question, can I standardize, standardize everything? Can I make it an agreement that everything uh, we do, we want to do it in a standard way, instead of saying, hey, you pick one point, I pick one point, I want everybody to pick the point in the same way. Okay. Or you can say, I want the best way of picking the point, so the formula become easy. Well, how do you do that? A straightforward way to think about it is uh, sine theta. is going to be y over r. Okay. Depending on how you pick the point, your r can be big or small. Then how about I pick a point such that one of the formulas is super easy. For example, if I pick r equals 1, then this formula reduced to, reduced to sine theta equals y, which basically gives me the same thing, right? If 4 over 2 gives me 2, but looking at 2 is always better than looking at 4 over 2 because I need to do the one additional trick in my mind to, to realize they are the same. Why don't I just have something that really, really, if I see the point, I automatically know the y is the sine and x is the cosine. I don't have to divide by r anymore. That would be great. Okay, so that is actually the motivation of doing the unit circle. That is, next time, you know, when you have an angle, you really want to pick a point. Why don't you just pick a point such that the distance from the point and this one is going to be exactly one? Then instead of this formula, we can use this simpler formula. If everybody does that, we are on the same page. We all have the simple way of saying this. But how do you make sure that r is always 1 if you draw any points? Then you just need to restrict. You just pick the point that is the intersection between the terminal side and, and this union circle. Okay. Can you pick the point here? Yes, it will work. But to pick the point on the unit circle is going to be easier because, because you have this form. That's the motivation why we want to talk about the unit circle. Okay. Later we will see we have other convenience if we talk about unit circles, but for now, this is the first motivation. Okay. What is the unit circle? The unit circle former is quite easy. That is given by x squared plus y squared equals 1, which is given by this. Mm -hmm. And you just make sure, okay, the distance from the center to all the sides has a radius of 1. Okay. What is this point? 1, 0. This point? 0, 1. This point? Negative 1, 0. This point? Um, 0, negative 1. So that is what we have from the unit circle. Okay. Second, now given an angle, we want to find a terminal point. For example, if we have the unit circle, can you find the terminal point that is going to be of pi over 4? And that is going to be, if I draw pi over 4, this point will be the terminal point, which is nothing but the intersection
of the terminal side and the unit circle. That is what we call a terminal point. Okay. For this one, then the point is here. What's the coordinate? Now you need to ask yourself, which is very easy to think about. Remember, we know sine theta is y over r, and cosine theta is x over r. Now, we know for 45 degree, they are both square root of 2 over 2. Moreover, we know r equals 1 because now we are picking the unit circle. This implies your x and y is just your cosine theta and sine theta. Therefore, this will be the terminal point corresponding to the angle pi over 4. Okay. What is the terminal point for the angle 5 pi over 6? Now you know I need to find this one. Moreover, it's going to be cosine 5 pi over 6. Before you have divided by r, now you don't, because your r is 1. Sine 5 pi over 6. Okay. x, y over r is gone. Then that is going to be, use what we had before, square root of 3 over 2, and 1 half, and moreover, this is negative. The value comes from the special angles. Okay, but positive or negative depends on your knowledge about uh, the quadrantal angles. Which quadrant your cosine is going to be positive or negative? All right. Terminal side, terminal point of negative pi. Negative 1, 0. Okay, so we have all this kind of really quickly. And this is actually from the graph, but automatically you will know, okay, that must mean cosine negative pi equals negative 1 and sine negative pi equals 0. Because these two are x and y, they are also cosine and sine theta. So with the cosine and sine theta table, you will be able to find all the terminal points by just putting the cosine to the x and the sine to be the y. So let me remark it. X equals cosine theta, y equals sine theta for your terminal point. That is very nice. All right. Now we want to go one more step. Okay. One more step that is, uh, let me find everything here. We want to Think about terminal points in terms of real numbers. Or let's say as distance rather than angles. Let me explain what I mean here. Okay. For example, where is the terminal side of pi over 4? Usually what you think about is, okay, first I draw an angle. I found a point, then you have pi over 4. But now I want to give you an alternative way to find this. That is, instead of thinking about the angle, we think about you start from 0 and you start moving for pi over 4 of the arc length. which give you a term, terminal point. Okay. Number one, they're the same. Why? Because we know the arc length formula equals theta times r. But for unit circle, your r is 1, so equals theta, which means the length of the pi over 4 here equals to the angle times the radius from this formula, but your radius is, is 1. So talking about the angle equals pi over 4 is the same as talking about the distance here is pi over 4. Okay. So what is the terminal point? Number one, it's the intersection between the terminal side and the unit circle. 
Number two, you can say the terminal point is starting from this point and starting going around this circle, along the trajectory of the circle, the parameter of the circle, for, for a certain distance. But the way to understand it, it's exactly the same as the angle. Okay, let's, so let's try something. What do you mean by um, the terminal point for pi? That basically means you start from here, you go along the circle for this long. Okay, not the angle, even though they are exactly the same, but we are talking about the parameter here for unit circle. What do you mean by 7 pi over 6? That means go from here, follow the unit circle, 4 pi over 6. This is where your terminal side is. But if you draw it, you know exactly that also means the angle here is 5 pi over 6. So instead of understanding the terminal point from the angle, you can actually think about the terminal point directly okay, as a point moving on the circle. Negative pi over 4. Start from here. Move 4. Negative pi over 4. Okay, so you can see you can have positive or negative corresponding to the angles. Basically, means do you move counterclockwise along the circle, or do you move clockwise along the circle? All right. So you have two ways of doing this. The first one is you draw the angle and then try to find where the point is. Second way, and you should get used to it, start to get used to it. That is, going from here, move along the circle for a certain distance. All right. Now, similarly, we have some concept, which is called the reference number. Mm, that is number two, so number three. Number. I will write down the definition, and you tell me what does it remind you. Let t be a real number. Okay. The reference number t bar. Associated with t. Is the shortest distance along the circle. Unit circle okay. between the terminal point and the x axis. Let's read it. Let's think about what we mean. Okay. Think about example. That is t equals pi uh, equals 3 pi over 4. Let's draw the unit circle. Now what should you do? You should first find the terminal side along the way. This is the terminal side. That is your t. Now, what is your reference number t bar? Associated with t. Now, try to read. The shortest distance along the unit circle between the terminal side and the axis, x axis. Therefore, your t bar should be, should be this. That's the shortest distance from the point to x axis along the circle. Let's do another one. 7 by over 6. How do you draw it? That is along the way to go 7 pi 
over 6. That's your t. What's your reference number? That is going to be the shortest distance along the circle between the point and x axis. So this is your t bar. Which is, which is how much you went further from pi to 7 pi over 6. So t equals pi, 3 pi over 4, t bar equals pi over 4, and here t equals this, and t bar equals pi over 6. Do you recognize what this is? That's exactly the reference angle. So reference number is the same as, I won't say the same, but is associated with your reference angle. Just the same way that your reference number is associated with the, re the not the reference, your angle is re associated with um, the arc length. The reference angle is also associated with the reference number. Okay, so now to find the reference number, it's the same as we're finding the reference angles. So I don't think we need more examples. I will just give you several quick ones for you to check. If t is 2 pi over 3, can you write down t bar? The same way you write down the reference angle. Okay. If t is 17 pi over 3, what is t bar? You know a 2 pi? This is roughly um, 5. And another 2 thirds pi. Okay. So if you think about it, a 4 pi doesn't change a thing. Now I do another pi, 5 pi. First you go for 2 twice, you do a third times, and you go another three pi over, 2 pi over 3, so roughly it's going to be here. Therefore, your t bar is going to be pi over 3. Okay, try several more examples. Try to see if you grab the same concept as uh, the concept of reference number. And if you get stuck with anything, just forget about the numbers. Think of, about things in angles. They are exactly the same thing. The only reason we are trying to do everything along this unit circle is later, when we take something like that, what we really want to is actually flat everything out. So starting from 0, go all the way to pi. We can map it from here to pi. So finally, we can have something that we are very familiar with, that is something like a function graph, when everything is flattened out. Okay, Angle is not so easy to map to it, but the distance on the circle can be easily mapped to the distance on the real axis.